Hello, hello everybody. I wanted to pop in and do a quick little tutorial. Maybe you'll enjoy this. Something you can do to add to those Easter baskets coming up uh, very quickly here. Sorry, I have a pattern in view. I need to move it out of view. It is a paid, it is my own design, but not ready to disclose. It's part of my, um, um, yeah, temperature blanket. I designed a whole section to go on that. That's a whole nother thing. Right now what you'll need is I am using worsted yarn. You can see you can I'm gonna do these little balls. Toss them in your Easter baskets, add it a little toy, something simple and easy, quick to make, relatively quick. Um, this one I did in worsted weight in three colors of blue. This one I did, the cat was playing with it, sorry. I did with leftover sock yarns. So it is also in uh, blues and greens. Um, yeah, it's got some, some dirty stuff on it because Abby was playing with it, of course. And so I would like to show you how to make that. What I'm going to use, um, three colors of any worsted yarn. Uh, like I said, you can use any weight yarn you want. When I use the um, fingering weight yarn, I used this hook here, which is a 2.75, although it does not say that on, a, on the hook, as this is a hook that I got from my great-grandmother, so this is very old. But um, when I put my micrometers on it, is it, it is a 2.75 millimeter. So I am going to use a 4 millimeter for this project. On, focus that is a Susan Bates made in Mexico it is a four millimeter also known as a G or a size six um, there's that I am using worsted yarn you'll need scissors and a tapestry needle let's hop into it shall we I am going to find the end and I'm gonna put this into the yarn bowl sitting up here it's gonna roll around in the yarn bowl and we'll get started I am going to start with a slip knot the size of your tail doesn't matter you're just going to have to weave that in anyway so um you can start with either a foundationless chain and single crochets or you can chain it out either way i'm going to chain it out two three four five six seven eight nine ten that way anybody can follow along if you want to 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. I count in fives. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. And then I need three more. One, two, and three. So I will, this is the front of the chain. I'm gonna flip it over and I'm gonna work into these back humps. Obviously you don't wanna work in the one closest to the hook, so the second one over. So you end up with 22 single crochets across this chain or if you're doing the foundationless chain, you'll need 22 single crochets. 22 stitches across. All is good either way that you decide to do it. I'm just doing it this way because, well, it's mostly what we teach when we do beginning crochet, isn't it, is to start with a chain. So we'll go that route this time with a simple and easy feel like the music is a little bit loud. Um, let me turn it down just a tad. I like the background music. I just don't want it to be um, so loud that it drowns, drowns things out, if you know what I mean. All right, get things all situated here. Here we go. work single crochets across here da -da -da. I just thought this was a nice quick easy project we could do to add to those Easter baskets at the end of the week which is this coming weekend so I hope everybody has a nice and happy Easter you have some fun with those kiddos or grandkids or whatever it is you have in your life when I get to the end here I like to work over the tail I'll chain one to turn and work up the other side I'm gonna take that tail and I'm gonna flop it over and I'm going to 
work over the tail as I do back loop only and single crochets across. This will create like a ribbing type of effect and crochet. There we go. Last, last bit is going to have a little fuzzy on the end, so I'm going to take the scissors and I'm just going to trim that off. Doop. And that tiny little bit, I don't throw it away, I add it to my fiber fill. A little bit of fiber fill sitting here. I love this new pair of scissors I have. They're fantastic. Love, love, love them. It was a birthday present. <laughs> I love it. Go. Yes, Miss Abby. What baby cakes? Oh, princess, what's the matter now? He was napping. Yeah, Mama, come in here and talk to herself. Is that distracting to you? I have a toy. We have a milk ring toy. It's one of her favorites to play with. Here, you want to play? You ready? Ready? Go get it. Yeah, girl. There we go, getting to the end. Two left. One more left. Here it is. I'm gonna chain one and I'm gonna do that four more times for a total of six rows. So this will be the third row of six. First row that you do in your chain or first row of foundationless single crochet counts as your first row. Imagine that, a cat hair. Remove that. <laughs> I am sure there are some in every project I make. Um, I do have two cats and as you can see over there there are some chickens. I have 15 in total. One is a rooster and he is on two the left side underneath the uh, hardware fencing. I love that hardware fencing because it keeps all the other little critters and things away. We've had a um, skunk hanging out lately. Comes every evening. I've been calling it Le Pew. <laughs> so we when I see it, I'm like, Le Pew is visiting. I obviously need to get out there and pull the grass out between the patio blocks, but... Simple and easy, right? We can do single crochets in the back loop. This is four of six. That's only 22 stitches long so fairly quick and easy you will need to make three of these in total so i got a message on my phone i'm getting more emails in um if you're keeping up with my channel at all you know that i am doing a sock knitting competition called sock madness um, they are not releasing the next pattern until after easter that way, not everybody is uh, ruining their Easter celebrations with uh, a knitting competition. So they're very, being very kind with that, but they have released an extra bonus pattern that was not uh, planned. So that's really cool. And it actually, this pattern uses both knit and crochet. So I'm excited to make this extra pair of socks. Um, hopefully you'll see it when I do my video on Monday. I just wanted to do a quick little tutorial on these balls. I'm, I'm thinking there's already a tutorial out on making these, but I thought I would bring it to the forefront a little bit because um, they're just a quick, easy leftover yarn, a good way to use leftover yarns. A little gift you can make for a birthday present or in this case toss in your Easter baskets as an extra little bonus gift for the little ones. What little one doesn't like a ball? 
We like balls. And these are nice and soft. They won't hurt if they throw it. You know, kids be kids. And let's admit, some of, some of us adults do the same thing. <laughs> At least my husband and I do. We have this um, Frisbee. It's only like maybe eight inch in circumference, but it's made out of uh, thread and crocheted. Three, four, five, so I need one more. And we toss that back and forth in the living room when we want to get each other's attention. And sometimes we'll just, if we're bored enough, we just toss it back and forth while we're watching a movie. Just, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why we do that, but we do that. And it's soft, so it's not going to hit anything. If it hits a lamp, it's not going to knock the lamp over. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It's, it's soft enough, and it doesn't hit really hard, so it's not going to... definitely doesn't hurt anything. It's a bit of a shock when it comes, and you're not expecting it to come, and all of a sudden it hits you, and you're just like, whoa. <laughs> Who knows, maybe these little balls will be a great gift for nursing homes. I don't know. Just an idea. I know they like stress balls. Okay, that was the last row. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so I am going to cut this off. I'm going to leave a little bit of a length, but not much. Oops, and I'm going to do a finishing knot there. Okay, and like I said, you will need three of these. I did two a little bit ago. One my favorite color, pink. My husband's favorite color in a dark maroonish type of yarn. And we both like gray. So, kind of rolled with those colors. You can use any colors you want. Use green, yellow, blue, red. Who cares? Doesn't matter doesn't matter. I'm done with the crochet hook. Now I'm going to pick up um, the sewing needle. Now let's go with, it doesn't matter which ones go where. They all get uh, equal visibility. What I'm going to do is I'm going to fold this in half to make a circle. So short end to short end and I'm just going to take the needle and sew this together. Just whip stitch style is fine. I usually do a little extra on the ends. It's usually a lot of stress point. So I'm just kind of whip stitching this together. Getting to this last one. I'm going to go under these two loops and those two loops and then back over here I'm going to go down through this side and come back oops come back maybe there up over here somewhere doesn't matter where I'm going to go back over to this side I'm going to create a knot here just to secure it Flip it over and I'm just going to weave this tail in through there and through the seam. Pull it through and then clip it off closely without clipping anything else. And I don't throw these tails away. I usually pull them apart. Since they're so short, it's easy to pull them apart. And I add them to my fiber fill. So I'm just going to toss that in my fiber fill. Alright. I'm going to leave it that way. I'm going to take the gray and I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to thread this end. Here we go. Fold it in half, short end to short end. I'm going to go up through the two loops on this end, this side, and down the two loops on this side, and back up on this side. I'm just going to continue whip stitching across to this seam. Do, 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 do. There we go. I'm getting to this end. I'm going to do the same thing on this end. 
under these two loops, under those two loops, and back around one more time. It kind of encloses that off. I'm going to create a knot on this side. And I'm going to kind of bury that knot in by taking my needle going up through my seam. Doesn't matter to where. There you go. And then I'm going to clip the excess off like that. Take this apart. Ooh. But I really want to rip apart. That's okay. There you go. Add that to the fiber fill. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put one inside of the other. I'm going to hold it there like that. I'm going to thread the last color on. The tail of the last color. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to flatten the center one out a little bit. So I'm going to put the pink through the gray. Okay, I'm going to pull the gray back in the center of the maroon. And then the other end of this pink, I'm going to go around the red and in the other side of the gray, kind of weaving it around this corner. And my needle is here at the ready, and I'm just going to go ahead and sew together this end of that seam. I'm sure there's another video tutorial out in this and the tutorial I think I got a glimpse of was just like oh well, that's a cool idea let's bring this to the forefront so by no means this is not my pattern um, I don't know that I really have seen a written pattern of this I've just seen somebody else make it and I thought well that's a cool idea it'd be a great time to bring this pattern to the forefront because um, it's simple, easy to make, we can use leftover yarns and add to those, add to those uh, Easter baskets if you'd like. I'm gonna pull this end apart. This one's a four ply. The other one was a three ply. There you go. Add that to the fiber fill. Then, if you want to hide your your um, seems a bit more work those to where they're turned underneath mm -hmm. pull them so you they get hidden underneath some of the other ones so this one here needs hidden a little bit so we'll you can maneuver them around and to add a little stability to this I will take some of that fiber fill I've been adding to I'm gonna pull it apart and work those strands into the fiber fill and I'm gonna pull it apart in this corner here and tuck a little bit of fiber fill in there I feel like it needs a tad bit more fill it however full you want your ball to be but then come back and fluff your strands of yarn out. Sometimes I like to follow one color, go to another color, straighten them back out, pull the ribbing, pull the ribbing that'll enclose it. I roll up my hands and there we go. We have a fun little ball we can add to Easter baskets. Now if you really wanted to you could tack these four corners together as well as the four corners on the other side so that uh, make it more difficult to get to that fiber fill in the center um, and that's how those are made just pretty simple easy fun to do with leftover colors of whatever you have um, and who knows add it to those easter baskets for a little extra fun color coordinate towards the person that you're making it for or if you know colors that somebody likes you can do it in those colors and who knows even if they just you know add it as a decoration on their bookshelf or whatever um, 
totally fun. I hope you have fun with it. I hope you have a happy Easter and I will definitely see you on the next video on Monday. I hope you have fun with this. Happy Easter. Have a good time and we'll see you Monday.